Hallelujah. Let's say just worship him. Hallelujah. Ambassadors of your word and of your gospel and, and, and of Christ Jesus our, our Savior. And we just give you all the glory for all that you're doing. And we thank you. We thank you. And we ask you.
to illuminate our minds today. Teach us from your word. Give us new understanding and revelation knowledge that we will understand and we will hear and we will hearken to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. And we just give you the glory right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am just so excited to be back uh, on the air with our broadcast. As uh, most of you know, I had uh, recently some surgery that wasn't that uh, bad, but the recovery time was a little, uh, a little more than I was bar bargaining for. But I do feel a lot better, and uh, thank you for your prayers. And we're excited about God's word. We're excited about the teaching and the, the ministering that we have been doing um, in this new year. Uh, we have been dealing with my time to shine for his glory. That was the message that God gave us at the beginning of the year on January 1st. And we've been just building on that uh, throughout the year up to this point. And today we're going to continue to build on it. But we're going to start in that same place in Isaiah 60 and 1. We're going to just kind of go back over where we started and what the basis of this series is. So if you turn to that, Isaiah 60 and 1. And it reads, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That's upon thee. That's, that's upon every believer. God's glory is rising upon you for his purpose. Yeah. What is his purpose for allowing his glory to shine? Why is he telling us to arise and to get up and to move forth and, 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 to, and to be more active and to be more aggressive in his kingdom? Uh, it goes on to say, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Darkness represents sin, and gross darkness represents multiplied sin. And, and what, what Isaiah is, is speaking here, he's saying that there's coming a time where sin is going to, going to rule the earth, it's going to abound, and, and, and men's hearts are going to wax cold, and you're going to see that the ways of, of people are going to be just extremely evil. But he's already told us that, that we're going to arise and shine. Even though this evil is, is, is on the earth, God's people are going to arise and shine. And his glory is going to make up, it, it, we're going to be a light even out of the darkness. People are going to see the light of God. And they are going to be drawn into his kingdom by his people. It goes on to say, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles, speaking of unsaved people, shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Anybody got sons and daughters and family members that they're looking to see get saved? And you're looking to see the errors of their ways change. And you're looking to see God touch their hearts and, and make their hearts soft and receptive to the gospel. Well, that's what we're gonna we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna we're gonna go to St. Luke chapter 15, verse number one. St. Luke 15 and 1. If you'll turn your Bibles to that. Something very interesting is, is, is uh, happening here in Luke 15 and 1. Uh, Luke 14. In Luke 14, Jesus was in the household. Uh, he was in a household uh, where it was a Pharisee's household. And there were, uh, there were many people that were gathered there. And he literally taught the Pharisees at this time. He just told them a number of parables that that uh, pertain to his kingdom. 
And so he literally taught them and just kind of mentored them in chapter 14. But in chapter 15, something a little different is happening. And I'm going to read, start to read that. It says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. So Jesus was in the company of sinners and publicans. Publicans uh, basically are tax collectors and uh, people that work for Rome. And, and it says that there were sinners there, and they all drew near to him to hear his teaching. Yes. And the Pharisees and scribe, scribes murmured, saying, This man received sinners and eateth with them. Now, remember I told you in, in chapter 14, he was speaking only to the Pharisees. So in, verse, in chapter 15, he begins to speak to sinners and to, to publicans, and the Pharisees did not find that to be a favorable thing. Um, Pharisees are a, a sect of the Jews that traditionally have been considered to be very self-righteous and very religious. Uh, that's what they represent, a religious group of people. And they are people that are uh, feel that their righteousness exceeds everybody else's righteousness. They literally put themselves upon a pedestal. Jesus once said, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you know, he mentioned them, and their, their self-righteousness, and so they are self-righteous people, and they're trying to judge Jesus for talking to people that were sinners and were not people that they approved of. And it goes on to say, um, and he spake this parable unto them, saying, something very interesting happened, because he drew near to the sinners and, and to the publicans. He was about to teach them. But what happens here is because of the murmuring and the bickering and the backbiting of the Pharisees, he, he, he does not teach the people that he was intending to teach. He turns and starts to teach the Pharisees who were judging these people and judging him for taking his gospel to these people. Now, I cried. there was a time of my life when I'm sure that I would have been considered one of the people that people were looking down upon Jesus talking to. Because I was a sinner, you know, I, and I was living a life that was not pleasing to people. And I know that some others have my testimony. I would love to say that I've always been a righteous person and I've always been good in everything that I did, but that's not my testimony. And the reason I'm telling you that is this is because had, it, had God not looked past my faults and seen that I was a soul that needed to be saved, I may have never received the salvation of the Lord. And so these people are listening to hear the salvation power of our Lord and Savior, but you have a group of self-righteous religious people that are bickering because Jesus is going to share his time and his message with them instead of sharing it with someone that they feel is more fit to hear the message. Y'all stay with me. We're going somewhere here. And so Jesus said, what man of you, this is the parable he said, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he lay it upon his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented, more than over ninety and nine just people which need no repentance. And we're going to just deal with just for a short time. Uh, it's going to be from verse number four. And it reads, uh, go after that which is lost until you find it. My God. Go after that which is lost until you find it. This year, I was, I was sharing with you a moment ago, um, 
we, we declare this to, to be the year that we as believers arise and shine and allow God's glory to be seen in us. We allow God's glory to be made manifest and that the unsaved and the non-believers are going to be drawn to Christ through us. He is going to use us as willing vessels that are going to show his glory and people are going to be drawn uh, by the light of Christ that they see in us. This is not the time of your life. This is not the season for you to stop believing that your loved ones and your family members are going to be saved. No matter what you're seeing in them, no matter how bad their situation uh, may be, I'm telling you, if you can just muster up the strength to believe that this is the season for change. This is the season that God is going to show his mercy and his grace, and he is going to show his favor upon you, and he is going to remember your prayers and the things that you have petitioned him for, the things that you have put before him about these individuals, you're going to see them starting to change their ways and they're going to become receptive to the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Your faith is literally going to make your hope and your desire for these people to be changed for their lives, to be changed for salvation, to be shown in their life and made manifest. Your faith in this season, if you don't faint, is going to turn those situations around. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to give up. The Lord is about to do things that are going to blow your mind. The things that you have given up on, the people that, you, that have appeared to get worse and worse over time. God is about to do this thing for you. He is about to change their lives and he is about to change their hearts and he is going to change the errors in their ways. So don't give up. This is not the time. This is not the season to give up. You've endured it too long. You've hoped it too long. You've believed it too long. You've cried too many tears. You've held on when hope appeared to be gone. Now you are about to see the fruit Thank of your labor, you the fruit of your diligence, the fruit of your faith. You've got to have and keep the God kind of faith. you got to have faith that God is able, regardless of what the situation looks like, God's desire is for them to be saved. God's desire is combined with your faith and with your desire. It is going to make these things that appear not to be, it is going to make them a reality in this season. In this season, in this season, he is going to make these things happen. God in this season is using his own methods and ways to turn the hearts of the lost and of sinners and of religious zealots to him. He's turning the hearts of people. Have, have you noticed that, that, that God is a, in, in a lot of situations and cases is taking his hands off people and off situations and he's allowing them to do what appears to be it, it, it appears like they're bottoming out it appears like there's no way for them to look but up it appears like all of their hope is failing and everything around them is just turning into turmoil and confusion it is not by accident it is all by the divine plan of God because he is softening their hearts. He is changing their minds and he is making them to see for themselves, not for you, not for me, but for themselves, that the only way that they're going to overcome is by God's power and by his grace. So understand, this is not the time to give up. This is not the time to turn back. This is not the time to allow your faith to fail. Don't take mildly the adverse situations and consequences God is allowing to happen in your loved one's lives as he is softening their hearts, like I just said, and correcting the errors of their ways and of their thinking. God is tearing down every high and idolatrous thing that is blinding the eyes and will of those that you are believing will be saved. 
He's literally showing them that the righteousness that they thought they had, the understanding that they thought they had, is not going to work. Only what he has for them, only what he said for them, is what is going to work in their lives and in their situations. They can run, but they cannot hide because no matter where they go, all trails are going to lead back to God. Thank you, Lord. Every trail. It's like that he's got a hook in their mouth. And he's reeling them in. He's reeling them in. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we can be, huh, we, can, we can somewhat delay the plan of God for a person's life. Sometimes, as, as, as loved ones and family members, we want to step in and we want to bail them out of every situation. And that's natural. That's because, because we love them. But, but we have to understand, we cannot become their enablers. We cannot be the people that just continually bail them out because if we continually bail them out, they'll never learn to look to God. Every time they get into a situation or, or, or have an issue, they're going to look to us to bail them out. There comes a time when we just have to say, you know what, I, I can't do it this time. I can't. Just like we had to learn to depend on God, there comes a time that every man Every woman is going to have to learn to depend on God and to look to the hills from which cometh their help. Yeah. Everyone's got to learn that lesson. So we have to be cautious. A lot of times it's easy for us to bail people out, but we have to pray about it because we don't want to abort or to stop or to delay anything that God is doing because we are emotionally torn or emotionally tied to the situation and we're seeing it with, with, with the eyes of a parent or with a, a, a sibling or, or a grandparent because we're seeing it from those eyes. We have to be very careful and be very mindful that when we help people, it is not in a test or a situation that is designed by God to bring change to their mindsets and change to their to, to their thinking, their heart, and everything about them so that he can get them to look to him for their help. In this season, God is giving special grace to his people to claim, reclaim the loss, especially family members and loved ones. This is the time for God's people to target and like Jesus says in our text, go after that which is lost until you find it. My Lord. You got to go after it until you find it. Don't give up. It's not the time to give up. You got to be diligent. You got to keep believing that God is able. He that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. First, you got to understand that God is able. Does God want them to be saved? Absolutely. Absolutely. He wants them to be saved. All you have to do is diligently seek him. Continue to seek him. Continue to believe. Continue to speak the word. Don't speak any negativity. Speak the word as pertaining to the situation. In faith. And understand that God is going to change the situation. God is going to change the situation. God is going to turn the hearts of those that are not having a heart towards him. And he is going to make their heart a fertile place for his love and his understanding, his compassion, his salvation. That's what he's doing now. He's turning their hearts towards him. He's turning their hearts towards him. Don't give up. Don't give up, no matter what the situation looks like. And you know, when, 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 I, was, when I was about to get my life together, the thing that happened to me that really kind of sealed the deal was because the bottom fell out of the barrel. Yes. Everything went awry. Everything that I was putting my hands on was, was, was just messing up. Everything that you're talking about a hopeless situation. Mm. In hopeless situations, you learn where to put your hope. Mm -hmm. In a situation where you have come to the place where you're saying, I cannot do this. That's when you're opening to do the door for the Almighty God to come in because through Him and by Him, all things are possible. Yes, Don't give up on your loved ones. 
Don't give up on your family members. Don't give up on your friends. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to give up. This is the time to go after it like you've never gone after it before. This is the time for you to, to, to seek God in this situation and to go forth and to look and to seek the lost out. And to and, and when you find it and when you seek it, when you when you get it, all you have to do is trust God to do the rest of the work. That's it. He's gonna fix it for you. Trust me. He's gonna fix it for you. This is a season. I'm speaking super, just lift your hands in his presence. I speak supernatural grace right now. I speak favor for every mother, for every grandmother, every father, every sibling, every friend of people that have been holding on to hope that they are going to get their lives together in Christ and that they are going to be saved and that they are going to have heaven as their eternal resting place and dwelling place. I speak right now strength to each and every person that is getting weary, each and every person that is getting discouraged, each and every person that is having heartaches because of watching people doing the things that they're doing. I speak now supernatural favor. I speak grace. I speak strength. I speak strength to endure in this season and to continue to pray and to continue to believe and to continue to hold on to God's word in this time that appears to be difficult. I believe that right now God is changing hearts, he's changing mindsets, and he is releasing his favor and his grace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Finding it represents claiming, reclaiming, and restoring what was lost. So when I say go after that which is lost until you find it, when I say find it, find it represents claiming it, reclaiming it, and restoring what was lost. That's what it represents. In Matthew 11 and 12, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. The enemy's plot and scheme is to keep your loved ones from spending eternity with God. Yeah. That's his design. But at this time, this is the time for you to become violent in your faith. This is the time to, for you to become violent in what you're believing. This is the time to become violent in your prayer life, in your fast life. Because God is going to get into the situation and he is bringing change to it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I know the situation might, it, 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 it's probably easier to think now. It's probably easier to say it's not going to happen. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. He has not forgotten you. He's not forgotten your prayers. He's not turned a deaf ear to your prayers. Hallelujah. 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 He's turning the situation now. This is your time. This is your season. This is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been praying for. This is what you've been hoping for. This is what your faith has been thrown out there for. This is the season that you see the manifestation. I speak it now in the name of Jesus. I speak that there's breakthrough right now. I speak right now that the hearts are turning. They're turning to God. I speak right now that even as we're believing for their salvation, that we're standing in faith. And that when the Son of Man comes, he's going to find faith. He's going to find faith. He's going to find us in faith. Knowing that without faith we can't please him. We understand that everything done outside of faith is sin. And so, Father, we stand in faith. Our hope is in you because we understand and we know that you are the one that is going to work this miracle. You are the one that is going to change these lives. And you are the one that are going to change these troubled people into people that have testimonies that are going to be powerful. We understand it, we know it, and we see it, Father. We see it happening now in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit that is trying to come against God's people. Every spirit that is trying to make God's people weary.
You've got to be violently aggressive and strategically seek out those lost loved ones. And this is not the time for error, slothfulness, double-mindedness, or emotional fatigue. This is not the time for any of that. This is the time to stand on his promises and to stand on this, his word. I believe I'm talking to somebody today. This is the time. This is the season. And if I be a man of God, I'm speaking into your situation. I'm speaking into those lives that this is the time that you've been praying for. This is the time that you've been believing God for. It's happening now. It's yea and amen. It's yea and amen. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. Go after that which is lost until you find it. And God's grace and favor is going to turn their situation and their hearts. God's grace and favor is turning their situations and their hearts. God's grace and favor is turning their situations and their hearts. Oh, God, we thank you. Now is the time for you to go after that which is lost. Seek them out until you find them. Be diligent and teach them and show them the gospel. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing. We got to show them the gospel. We got to literally show, they got to literally see the gospel of Jesus Christ in us. Even when it's hard to, to love them, we got to show them the love and the compassion of the Most High. We got to show them that we are living a life of faith that says you're healed. It says you're delivered. It says you're set free. I don't care what I'm seeing happening with you right now. I don't care how bad the situation appears to be. It's over. It is done. God's hand has stepped in and he has made this miracle become a reality because his word says he's going to do it. Because his word says he's going to do it. He's not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should ever have to repent for lying. If he said it, it's done. If he said it, the answer is yes. If he said it, it is the end. Case closed, it is done. He's going to do it for you. He's doing it now. He's doing it now. I know. I got loved ones. I, I mean, unless God steps in, and unless God does the, the work, it won't happen. You know, I when, when I was a young preacher, I used to say, Lord, use me to save my whole household. Use me to, 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 to get them all saved. And then as I became an older preacher and a more wise preacher, I said, Lord, by hook or by crook, Jesus. whatever you got to do, I take my hands off it. I don't care how you do it. I ain't trying to be God. I don't care who you use or what you use. Just do it. I need it done. I don't want them spending eternity in hell. God. Oh, God. By hook or by hook. Is that your testimony now? Is that your testimony now? Lord, I don't care how you do it. Just do it. Lord, I just need them saved. I can't stand to see them living the way they're living because the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy their lives. And if you don't step in, and if you don't turn the situation and their hearts and their lives and their minds, oh God, I'd hate to think of what might happen. Yes. Uh, God, I thank you. I thank you. In our text, Jesus is prepared to teach all the sinners and tax collectors about his salvation. But then you have this group of religious people that step in and they become a distraction to the point where Jesus can't teach these people about salvation. Why, why is he talking about that? Why am I bringing that out of the scripture? Don't listen to what nobody tells you. Them folks that saying they ain't never going to be no good. Them folks that saying that, that they're never going to be right. Them folks that saying, saying, why are you still holding on hope for them? Don't listen to them. Mm -hmm. The only thing that matters is what he says and what his word says. Yes. You don't want to listen to a person with a self-righteous spirit 
and, and, and that, that, that is, is, is overly zealous and thinks that they can make the decisions for God like the Pharisees did. The Pharisees literally thought that they could tell the Lord of their salvation who he needs to eat food with and eat who he needs to be in communion with. Don't do it. Don't let them tell you. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. His grace is sufficient. Keep holding on. No weapon formed to get you is going to prosper. Keep holding on. When the enemy has been coming in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is even setting up a standard in Christ Jesus for your household. Don't, 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 don't let them talk you into losing your faith and losing your hope. God is going to do this. God is going to do this. God is going to honor his word and he is going to do it in this season. Don't get weary. Don't get weary. I believe I'm talking to somebody. Don't get weary. Just trust in the Lord. Just trust in him. Put your trust in him. It's, it's ironic. Have you ever seen a religious saved person try to tell you not to have faith? Have you ever seen that? They, they, it's almost like they encourage you to, to, to let your faith fail as far as a situation is concerned that you're believing God for. Don't let them do it. Don't let them talk you out of it. You got to know in your knowing that God is going to do this. I used to like how the old mothers in the church, they would grab a hold of something in prayer and they wouldn't stop until it happened. I've heard testimonies of, from, from, from church mothers and we need to hear those testimonies. But I've heard testimonies about how God has saved their unsaved sons and daughters and grandchildren and how God has stepped in and things have looked so crazy that everybody has given up hope. But see, God thrives in hopeless situations. He thrives in situations that are here to be hopeless. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. In spite of what Jesus said and did, there are believers that don't believe that the gospel should be taken beyond the walls of the church, let alone to the loved ones that you have. See, you can't expect a person that, first of all, doesn't believe that the gospel should be taken to the streets or taken somewhere else or taken to sinners. You can't let them tell you to give up on your loved one because they're not living right. You can't tell you. Those people really don't even have anything to say about the situation. You need to surround yourself with people who talk the language of faith. You need to surround yourself with people who say God's coming. He ain't done yet. He's going to do this. All you got to do is hold on. You know, why did Jesus spend his time around sinners? You ever wondered that? Let me tell you why. Go to Matthew 9 and 10. Go to Matthew 9 and 10. Matthew 9 and 10. I think it's about nine times in the Gospels it says that Jesus was surrounded by sinners and publicans. This scripture tells you why he did that. 9 and 10. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, Many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? Now, let me tell you this. First thing you notice about that, why, why didn't, they, didn't they say that to Jesus? Why, you know, they know who to go to, right? They know who to go to, you know? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm getting at? Folks know who to go to with some foolishness. They know who to go to. They didn't go to Jesus. They assumed these men, because in the book of Acts it said they were, they, they were what, what did it say? They were illiterate, unlearned men. They chose these, the Pharisees chose these men to take this mess to. And they did not take it to Jesus. But the thing that, that always amazes me, every time you read one of these scriptures, Jesus hears it by the Holy Ghost and he deals with it. And so he goes on to say, but when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that behold need not a physician. In other words, it, it's the sick folks that need a doctor. That's what he's saying. 
but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I have mercy. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. What that comes comes from Hosea six and six. And what that means is, is if you heard heard the, the, the expression. Um, it's it's well. I tell you what. That scripture means that it is better for it is better for you to have mercy, godly mercy and kindness, than for you to bring your sacrifice to the altar and you're living in unforgiveness and being unmerciful. That's what it means. That's what he's talking about there. He's saying that you're bringing your, as a religious person, yeah, you're bringing your sacrifices, you're doing this, you're doing that, but you don't have the right heart. Your heart is not right. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. That's why Jesus spent so much time with sinners. That's why he spent his time and his concern with people that were not necessarily living the ways or experiencing the, 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 the growth of his kingdom and of his gospel. Jesus literally, he literally went to people that he targeted that needed to be saved. He targeted them. So anybody that has a heart that is not for the unsaved, anybody that says, well, why are you going to, why are you keep holding out faith for this unsaved person? Why haven't you given up on this person? Why are you still believing God on them after all that they've done and all that they've sent, them, them, sent you through? Just talk to them about Jesus. Just talk to him about how even when everybody had given up on us, even when everybody was saying that we'll never be right or we'll never be able to overcome the things that we're up against, it was God's grace and it was his mercy that kept us. It was his grace and it was his mercy that delivered us. It is his grace and it is his, his mercy that is keeping us even in this day. Understand that those people do not have a heaven or a hell to put that individual or anybody else in. It is only God. And his word says that they are saved. His desire is for them to be saved. His desire is for them to be receptive to the gospel. And so what we have to understand is that God has always got to have the final say-so in the matter. He's always got to have the final say-so in the matter. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. I don't care what it looks like. Don't give up. I don't care how bad the situation appears. Don't give up. I don't care how you banged your head up against the wall trying to figure it out and trying to hold on. Don't give up. He's not a man that he should like, nor is he the son of man that he should ever have to repent. Nor is he the son of man that he should ever have to repent. Let's go back to our text for just a moment in closing. Luke 15 and 1. Luke 15 and 1. Hallelujah. 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 Is this helping somebody? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Luke 15 and 1, in, in verse number 1, we see that Jesus knew that, that Jesus drew near to him all of the sinners and all the publicans to hear his teaching. And the fair in verse 2, the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, this man received sinners, and he eateth with them. In verse number three, you see a shift in Jesus turns his focus from teaching those that were not saved to teaching the people that were being critical of those that were not saved. That's what we see here. In verse number four, that's where our text comes from. It reads, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it. Let me give you a revelation of what, what that just said. Here's what it said. What church with a hundred members, this is what the parable is about, what church that has a hundred members and then they lose one member, what church 
would not get up and go after the one which is lost because the 99 is in safety. The 99 is in safety. Now let me tell you something about sheep. It draws a parallel with sheep because sheep are, are such that as long as sheep are in a pack, they are relatively safe. But it's the one that strays away that is in danger. The, the pack, there's safety in that 99, but there's one that is lost, and he's saying, go after that lost one. And then he goes on to say, and when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that is reclaimed. Over one sinner that is reclaimed, there's going to be joy in heaven. There's going to be joy. This, this, this teaching, this is a, chapter 15, is a series of, of, par of parables that talk about being lost. It goes on to talk about the lost coin, and then it talks about the prodigal son. Maybe we'll deal with that next week because there's some very important truths in, in, that, in that parable. But there is rejoicing in heaven. There is rejoicing in heaven over one person that repents and comes back to the Lord or either comes to the Lord. In heaven. Come on, just lift your hands. Father, we thank you today for strengthening us and giving us a mindset to go forward and to trust your word. We thank you, Father, for giving us a heart not to give up for those people that we are holding on hope for and that we are believing in faith that you are bringing deliverance to them even now. We declare that this is the season for change in their lives and in their situations. We're calling them now in from the north, the south, and the east and the west and we're compelling them into the kingdom of the Most High. We're buying every spirit that is not of God, that is holding them captive right now. And we're commanding them to be loose in the name of Jesus. And we're declaring that by Jesus' stripes, they are healed, delivered, and set free. And we are just speaking right now, total turnaround in each and every life, every life that we are believing is going to change now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just, just right now. Just as, 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 as a faith offering. Come on, just worship the Lord. Come on, just worship the Lord. Just release your faith. Just for the Lord in the hand. Come on, just feel the hand he's here right now. And his adoration. Hallelujah. 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 He's doing it for you now. He's doing it for you now. He's doing it for you now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many times I stayed away. Yeah. 
Amen. 